What's up guys, it's Zero here. Today we've got a lot of news to talk about, so let's get into it. So guys, as you all know, there's been a lot of drama that's been happening within the community surrounding the Dr. Disrespect situation. I want to talk about Dr. Disrespect and, you know, his statement, his video, his return to YouTube, and some of the things that he had to say. We're going to break it down, and I would love to hear your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. So let's get into it. For almost four years, champs, the public demanded to hear from the doc regarding the Twitch suspension. I guess since you all missed the point with my personal statement, maybe it's time to tell my side of the story. Huh, champs? Please. You see, there was a lawsuit pending, and as part of that arbitration, all parties were not allowed to speak publicly about the case. <laughs> I respected those rules. My lawsuit against Twitch was eventually resolved, as you all know. But even then, as part of the settlement, all parties were still prohibited from speaking publicly about the case or the settlement. However, if one side violated that confidentiality, then the other side could respond. And again, champs, again, I respected all the confidential obligations. <laughs> Mm -mm. But apparently Twitch's own disgruntled employees didn't feel the need to abide by those same obligations. Cody Connors, ex-Twitch employee, wasn't even involved, leaks Twitch's reported reason. Years later, Cody, why, why, you, why do this? What was the point? Who the fuck is Cody anyway? I mean, obviously to me guys, I got no idea who the fuck Cody is, but he's here. This was settled professionally. And you knowing how black and white the internet is, you decided you fucking rat to leak the reported reason Twitch banned me in 2020. Well, I mean, for what? Cody, why? Did you not know the repercussions from spewing lies about the two time? Did you not know the repercussions of accusing me, Cody Connors? You see, you don't know shit. And it was obvious from your tweet. You didn't have any firsthand knowledge of my dispute with Twitch. You said that I got banned from Twitch because I was sexting a minor through whispers messages. <laughs> Do you even know what the legal definition of sexting is? I do. And yeah, I used Twitch's whispers, but trust me, I wasn't sexting anyone. You also said the word minor, Cody. I even made sure that word was emphasized in my statement, edited, etc., just to make sure these so-called journalists would pick up on it. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, did they ever, champs. When you and all these so-called journalists, Cody, fired off your tweets, did any of you consider that the Twitch user may have been over the legal age of consent at the time of the messages? Well, he's not denying that he was talking to somebody. And hey, you know, by the way, it's like, brother, you're married. You know, kids, marriage, you know, over the age of 30. It doesn't look good. It doesn't. It doesn't look good. You know, whether it's a minor, which is way worse, but if it's if she's not a minor, even the legal age of consent, it still doesn't look good, bro. Like you fucked up. You didn't. Neither did any of these journalists and neither did Twitch at the time of the ban. You also tried to tell the world that I was trying to meet up with this user at TwitchCon, but you're wrong. Let's set the record straight. I never intended to meet this user ever. We never made plans to meet at TwitchCon or anywhere else. And in fact, we n never met in person ever. Your bullshit accusations gave false courage to other former Twitch employees to make shit up as well. 
I suspect all of you sort of planned and coordinated this attack. These big time publications, these, these journalists, these various outlets are sort of just gossip, gossip channels now, don't you think, champs? They act like they're just gossip channels now without any real journalism and real research happening. I can agree with that. I do feel like real journalism, like what Richard Lewis does and stuff, it doesn't exist within this space in a pretty massive way. I mean, you could argue there's a few like awesome journalists that are out there that cover gaming, cover esports at the highest level. But then there's others that have turned into gossip channels. So I do agree with him on this. We're on all this based on leaks from two former Twitch employees, one of whom was supposedly on the trust and safety team. If these anonymous sources worked on the trust and safety team at the time of my Twitch suspension in 2020, then you would hope they would tell the truth. But apparently that's just too much to ask. If these former trust and safety team members, and by the way, I know exactly who they are, <laughs> actually had firsthand knowledge, then what they conveniently left out is, one, Twitch's trust and safety team, the same employees that decided to ban me, internally admitted that the whisper messages were not sexting. And two, Twitch's trust and safety team, the same employees that decided to ban me, internally acknowledged that the whispers did not constitute child sexual abuse material CSAM. I'll say it again. Neither I nor the Twitch user exchanged any sexual graphic messages or images. Cody Connors and these other anonymous sources are trying to paint a picture that I was exchanging sexually explicit messages and photos with this Twitch user. That never happened. I even used the word inappropriate, purposely. And look at how it's defined by everyone, champs. Huh? Including these defaming articles. I'm sorry, but mutual bantering with inappropriate jokes taken out of context should have never led to me getting banned from Twitch in the first place. Okay, hold up. He's admitting, though, that it was inappropriate. Look, I just keep going back to the fact that he's a dad and that he has a wife. That, that's what I can't get past. It's like, yeah, dude, like, okay, inappropriate or not, you're talking to people in a certain manner and it's like, but yeah, dude, but why are you even putting yourself in this type of situation? You have a wife, you're a dad, like, bro, come on. It's hard to defend those types of actions. And by the way, when we talk about Twitch employees, I don't know the ins and outs behind the scenes of what goes on at Twitch, but what I have heard is from a number of other creators out there, including guys at the highest level like Nick Merckx, who say that there are some pretty seedy people that work behind the scenes at Twitch. Like I said, their words, not mine, but I have heard that there are some people that really create and paint these bad pictures over there at Twitch. Just giving you guys a little bit of some context on that. I mean, how would each of you look if all of your private DMs, your text messages, your chats were looked at, dissected, and taken out of context by someone who's deliberately trying to find something inappropriate in those words? And this is not a situation where a victim publicly accuses someone of wrongdoing. That never happened here. We're talking about allegations that Twitch made against me as a half-baked reason for justifying their actions of suspending and shutting down my channel. Allegations that Twitch made without even a legal analysis of whether the whisper messages were legal. You see, I engage with my community. I engage with other streamers. And through Twitch whispers, I communicate with Twitch users conversations that consisted of a variety of playing games and gaming politics, content creation, random stuff. This was the extent of my whispers with this Twitch user. On June 21st, 2020, my ex Twitch partner manager learns that I exchanged whispers with the Twitch user. <laughs> and I say ex partner manager because for years, this guy didn't do anything for me, my community or my channel. For years, 
I'm talking no front page love. You're talking about the face of the platform, right? Literally. Dr. Disrespect, guys, I will say, was absolutely the face of not even just Twitch, of gaming in a number of different, like when we look at from the perspective of, okay, when you think of gamers, when you think of gaming, Dr. Disrespect is at the forefront of that. I mean, he took streaming and made it a literal show. And I think that's something that you can't take away from him. Sure, there's guys that have come after Dr. Disrespect's reign at the top, that being guys like Ninja, Kai, you know, you've got a number of people now, I Show Speed, all these different guys who have come after him, but he really created a show and still does to this day when it comes to streaming. At the highest level, he absolutely does that. The face of the platform. We heart, and I know Champions Club remembers this. We got, we got z zero front page love on the website. Uh, he was never on my channel. He didn't follow me on Twitter. He, he wouldn't even inform us about Twitch rival tournaments. We're talking about the two time Twitch rival tournament. Oh, I'm sorry. I got, I, would you, would you want to play in it? <laughs> we got zero support from this guy. And it was just so obvious that he carried a grudge against the two time. So after we signed with Twitch in 2019, we asked for a new partner manager. And just a few months later, that ex Twitch partner manager is directly involved with getting me banned. <laughs> Coincidence? The Twitch user tells the ex Twitch partner manager that they do not want to report anything to Twitch. I'll repeat that sentence one more time just in case anybody missed that one. The Twitch user tells this ex Twitch partner manager that they do not want to report anything to Twitch. But this ex Twitch partner manager encourages the user and even directs them to file a report directly with Twitch, even though the user told him clearly that we never physically met anywhere and that no photographs were exchanged. On June 24th, 2020, Twitch's special operations team receives and reviews the user's report. They find no issues and determine that it did not warrant any further escalation to Twitch's law enforcement response team. <clears throat> that would have been the end. <laughs> that should have been the end. But that partner manager, oh boy, oh boy, did he have it out. Yeah, he had it out for the two time. He finds out that no further action will be taken. So what does he do? He personally escalates the report to a friend on the Twitch's LER team. The LER team, remember, that's the Twitch's law enforcement response team. He escalates the report to a friend on Twitch's LER team. So a day later, on June 25th, the LER analyst pulls the entirety of the whisper messages and begins discussing them with his director of the LER team. Mind you, this director is on vacation at that time and does not have access to their computer or work files. L let me just remind you, I went through a multi-year, multi a, a, a big time arbitration, okay? And uh, you know, you discover a lot of stuff. What you got to admit guys, this whole story is crazy. It's a wild story and it's been going on for years. I mean, we're talking, we're going back to 2020 here when these, like the allegations and all these different things were happening between Twitch and Dr. Disrespect. I think there's one thing that is clear, Dr. Disrespect and Twitch don't get along or there's some people at Twitch that do not like the two time. I think the bottom line is there are people at Twitch that do not like Dr. Disrespect Maybe they had it out for him and whatever that was, whatever happened there, that cannot be emphasized enough that his relationship with Twitch is very, very bad at this point. Mind you, this director is on vacation at that time. The LER analyst cherry picks and sends a few targeted excerpts out of context from the whisper messages to this director. Now, if you do this, you can make anyone's messages look inappropriate, even when they aren't. Within less than one hour, this LER analyst and his director have made the decision to suspend me from Twitch. Twitch submits a report to NCMEC. You guys all read those little articles, huh? The NCMEC. Twitch submits that report. 
the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Guess what? As far as I know, and over four years have passed, they didn't do anything with the report. As far as I know, they didn't escalate Twitch's report to law enforcement. <laughs> Mind you, the same people that made this decision admit internally that the messages did not constitute sexting. The same people that made this decision at Twitch admit internally that the messages did not warrant any child sexual abuse material charge. Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me while admitted they did not perform any legal analysis of whether the messages exchanged were illegal in any way. Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me while admitting that they never investigated the age of consent in the jurisdiction where the user's messages were sent and received. Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me without ever interviewing me, the user, or any other third party, including the partner manager. It's fucking unbelievable! All I will say, though, about that is, at this point, Dr. Disrespect, he could... I think he could wipe this slate clean if he just released the whispers. Is it just me? Is this on? Hey, Doc, just release the whispers. Just show the world and we'll move on. Or was there more inappropriate things happening within these whispers? It's it's a hard situation. It's like, hey man, like just release it. Show everybody if they didn't constitute all these different things, let just release it to everybody. Now maybe it's being bound by like, you know, legally, like you can't share certain things, but I think that if what he's saying is true, if you release the whispers, everybody's going to see it and it could very well prove his innocence. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'm not going to get into every detail regarding my legal case, <clears throat> but these former Twitch employees that claim to have firsthand knowledge, they just don't have a clue. They didn't report any facts. The judge in the case determined that the whispers were not illegal. <laughs> so then why did Twitch use these messages against me? I, I, why did Twi Twitch treat the doc so differently from their other streamers? I mean, outside of the obvious. I mean, just take a look at me, <laughs> Unfiltered. The realest motherfucker in this industry. Well, there you have it. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts about this whole situation. It's a crazy situation, guys, and it's pretty mind-blowing when you think of the scope of it, how long this has been going on. I want to hear your guys' thoughts about it in the comment section. Also, you know, what's kind of crazy is I have had a number of people who have reached out to me about Mia Khalifa. You're probably like, wait, what? <laughs> Why? Well, it just so happens, guys, that the two biggest, most popular videos on my YouTube channel were videos talking about Mia Khalifa. And people are wondering, hey, Zero, what's happening with Mia Khalifa? Is she going to return back to the adult film industry? Let's talk about it. I think in order for us to talk about will Mia Khalifa ever return back to the adult film industry, we got to go back in the past of how this whole thing started. So in an article, guys, coming to us from Hindustan Times, speaking about how it all began, given that she had a decent college education, Mia said, I don't think low self-esteem discriminates against anyone. It doesn't matter if you come from a great family or if you come from a not so great background. I struggled my entire childhood with weight and I never felt attractive or worthy of male attention. And suddenly, in my first year of college, I start losing all this weight from making small changes and by the time I graduated, I was ready to make a bigger difference. I felt extremely self-conscious about my breast because that was the first thing to go when I lost weight. I lost about 50 pounds and once I did that, I started garnering all this attention from men and I was never used to it. And I felt like unless I held on to it or what was expected of me and after feeling what was validation and you know the compliments for the first time, I did not want that to go away. On the question of how she got into the porn industry, she said, it wasn't just, hey, do you want to come and do porn? It was more so, oh, you're beautiful. Would you like to do some modeling? Oh, you have a great body. I think you should do nude modeling, things like that. And after 
I came and toured the studio is very respectful. It was clean. Everyone who worked there was nice. Like it was nothing dodgy or that made me uncomfortable. On the question on whether or not she had a lawyer to take her through the paperwork, she replied, what 21 year old has a lawyer on retainer? Answering queries on how stressful the experience has been, more so today after she had moved on, she said, I think post-traumatic stress kicks on mostly when I go on public. Because the stares I get, I feel like people can see through my clothes and it brings me deep shame. It makes me feel like I lost all rights to my privacy, which I did because I'm just one Google search away. The things that men see in videos they expect from the women in their lives and that's just not reality. No one is going to be perfect and no one is going to do those acts on a Wednesday night with the person they love, she went on. Her story is not hers alone and that there will be many actors and actresses going through similar ordeal. Agreeing to it, she said, I honestly started seeing that recently after the interview came out and people started reaching out and all of the emails go, my manager checks them and when he gets stuff like that, he filters them and sends them to me and reading the words of some of these girls who have been sex trafficked and forced into porn and all of these stories of girls whose lives have been ruined by it and by men who have taken advantage of them and by contracts that they didn't even understand the jargon of. It makes me feel like maybe it was good that I started talking and that I posted this interview and that I'm speaking out now because other people feel the same way. And even if they don't relate on a deep level as doing porn, they can relate on the level of being insecure and being pressured into doing something they didn't want to do. I think the bottom line is this, guys. Mia Khalifa, the reality is, is that she was in the industry for a short period of time and she left and she doesn't want to return. It sounds like she wants to do other things with her life and really it sounds like she doesn't love all the exposure she got from it, not expecting all that exposure. Now sure, her having the following she does, she has been able and really is able to do whatever she wants now moving forward because she has such a massive fan base on social media and things of that nature. So the porn industry you know, gave her like tens of thousands of dollars, nothing crazy though, in order to do porn. And that has returned in a massive way based on her following and things of that nature. But I don't think she's going to return back to the adult film industry because she had a lot of things that she didn't like about the industry. And I look at it as if you're in a job that you don't like anymore and you've been there for a number of years or a number of months, however long it's been that you've been with a current job, if you don't like it anymore, for whatever reasons, bad workplace environment, bad people, people to work with, you don't like the different kinds of conditions or the different restrictions that that job gives you, you're probably going to move on to something else. In the adult film industry, it's nothing different. It's the same kind of thing. You're going to be going through struggles no matter what the job is. And so I think the reality is, is that she was in the industry for a short period of time, realized she didn't want to do it anymore, and she left. And now she's doing other things. And she can really do almost whatever she wants to do because she has such a massive fan base now behind her. Will she ever return to porn? I don't think so, guys. I think that she has moved away from the adult film industry completely, but I just don't think that she's going to return back to an industry that she just doesn't like anymore. But I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comment section down below. And that's what I had for you today in this video. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section down below. And for more content, keep it right here.